Well, I've practiced psychiatry and neurology since 1922. Wortham was born in Germany in 1895, and he grew up and studied uh, medicine, decided that he wanted to go into psychiatry at a fairly young age. He met Freud and interviewed Freud and was very influenced by Freud and Freud's followers. And of course, like many people, most people, I suspect, he was shaped by the culture in which he, from which he emerged. He was born to a middle class, a highly assimilated Jewish family in Germany. And one of the transforming, I guess, events in his life was around the First World War when he was a student studying medicine at King's College, the University of London. And he was interned by the British as a German national. This is the First World War. Now, Wortham was not hostile to being um, interned. He used it, actually, to read a lot of Charles Dickens, a lot of Fabian literature, and that helped shape his notions of social justice. And then after the war, he returned to Germany, where he studied at several universities and finally getting his uh, MD degree from Würzburg. In the 1920s, he moved to the United States. He became a naturalized American citizen, and he worked at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore before getting a job uh, in New York at Bellevue Hospital and Queens Mental Health Center. After Wortham established the clinic down in Johns Hopkins, he actually moved to New York and became the director of the uh, Court of General Sessions Psychiatric Clinic. So basically a, a court clinic asso associated with a court in which uh, he would evaluate criminal defendants for things like competency to stand trial, and sanity at the time of the act. In the 1930s, he becomes very involved in forensic psychiatry. And part of it is his notion of understanding how people work and dealing with cultural violence. Why people commit crimes, why they do heinous murders. With was very interested in violence, individual culture, and how and why people commit crimes, and how or why people can be treated. What's interesting about him is the way that he was very involved in a kind of German expatriate intellectual community that existed in the United States around the time of the Second World War. So after the rise of Hitler in the early 1930s in Germany, we saw a massive outmigration of German intellectuals to the United States and elsewhere across Europe. And Wortham was very much involved in, in that kind of scene. He knew a lot of the important writers that uh, lived in New York in the 1940s and 1950s. 50s, he knew a lot of the important artists and intellectuals. He was a significant collector of modern art, what was then contemporary art in the United States, and he was a very kind of cultivated man, very serious intellectual and very dedicated political liberal who wanted to uh, make a positive impact in the world through his writings and through his work with his individual psych uh, psychiatric patients. And he began to specialize in children and in problems of youth and in other problems. He was a political uh, radical, if maybe, it's hard to say, radical liberal, I'm not sure exactly what the term would be uh, uh, to designate him, but he was certainly uh, a person of the left. And uh, he had friends in the left, and his, uh, his uh, associations with left-wing intellectuals uh, were important. And, uh, and in an odd way, he repeated some of their arguments in a kind of simple-minded simple way. Because there was, a, in the 1930s and 1940s and 1950s, in the United States, a whole group of what were called the Frankfurt intellectuals. And the Frankfurt intellectuals also argued that mass culture was a destructive force in society. And what Wortham did was to simplify and simplify in an extraordinary way that argument and apply it to juvenile delinquency. But he was really a part of that group. And moreover, these children who commit this such a delinquency, for instance, they don't do that because they're bad. They don't even necessarily do it to get the money or to get even, but it's a glorious deed.